This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're here. I'm Jay Fidel on Think Tech, and guess what? It's the two o'clock block, and guess what? It's community matters because community does matter, and we have a guy who thinks about that all day long. Peter Adler of Accord Three. Okay, hi, Peter. Hi there. We got a lot of questions for you. Jay. Yeah, you're going to fix it for us. And Greg Chun from the University of Hawaii, involved in what? University outreach, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, working with the community to make sure that we're addressing the right questions. Yeah. Okay. The question of the day is public participation in a polarized era. Okay, this is a serious problem. We have a lot of talk in this town, including in the legislature, the city council, and around the executive branch too, but we don't necessarily have any action. We don't actually come together. Consensus is an elusive goal, may I say. So, can you articulate the problem and how it affects our lives, our government, our, you know, our state in general. Well, one of the, just, you don't have to look much farther than the voter turnout to understand public participation. Now, I understand that we have our own cultural ways of doing things. It's a, we're a different sort of a community. We're not New York, we're not Los Angeles. Uh, but we have laws on the books about public participation that are 30 years old and really haven't been looked at with fresh eyes. So part of this event is to do just that. So December 1, we're meeting, we expect 100, 150 people, and we are going to try and take stock of what works, what doesn't work, and what are some of the course corrections we need to do, both for things that are required as well as the other ways that people can and do and sometimes participate. Okay. Who's coming? Who's speaking? Uh, we're going to have quite a lineup of people, including uh, my good friend Greg Chun, but we're going to have uh, uh, several, a panel in the morning with a bunch of cases and the good, bad, the ugly, all case real, studies. Case studies. I love case studies. Yeah, so we're going to have can, some We're going to have some case studies here at this table. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we're going to look, for example, at the Kaka'ako Citizen Advisory Committee. We're going to look at some of the, the complete streets planning that uh, one of the planning firms is doing. We're going to take a look at the new, a new dairy on Kauai and you know, how hard that's been. And, uh, and we're going to look at Envision Mauna Kea, which is Greg's bailiwick, one he's mm -hmm. been working on. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at the Native Hawaiian Constitutional Convention. So we're looking at different methods and saying, do those work? Are they good forums for at least consultation and problem solving? Or do we need to do better? That's what we're going to be doing. And we're going to be doing that all day long. Next day, we'll be doing some specialized strategy and skill workshops. This is really important that we do this, clearly, because I think we have, we have a culture problem here. We were always seeking consensus, but never actually getting there. Uh, and it's always, may I say, kicking the can down the road. Lots of events and conferences and group sessions and work workshops. And <laughs> I could go on seminars, I could go on. Um, but if you look at either, each one of them, you know, it's hard to draw a line from that to action. Yep. And so I guess what you guys are saying is that this one is different. This conference is different from other conferences because you have a special sauce. Well, uh, we do. And we do. We're going to have some good food, too, so that's always <laughs> a special sauce. But, but, yeah, we want to tee it up and incubate processes and uh, ways that we can start to improve this whole political participation climate in Hawaii. We don't know if we'll be successful. It certainly won't happen on that day, but we better come out with a short list of things that we can do, and we think we will. Yeah. So how do you feel about this? I mean, what's your role in it? I mean, you know, from the point of view of the university, and as we discussed before, a lot of ideas, maybe most of the really important ideas that you sort of foment around our community come from the university one way or the other. So where do you stand? Where does the university stand in looking at this? I think the university in general has uh, uh, become much more uh, engaged in understanding the need to bridge their work with, with the communities that they're working in. That's, that's sort of a general statement. And certainly a lot of my, the work that I do at the university is involved in, in working with our researchers, working with our scientists, working with uh, our administration, and trying to uh, align the work that they're doing better with, custom, uh, with uh, community uh, needs and community interests. But in terms of the process that Peter is talking about, uh, it's something that I personally have been very, very concerned about for many, many years. I, I, it's not that the conflict, public conflict, hasn't uh, occurred in the past. Uh, it, that's just sort of natural in our demo democratic process. But what I do see, what concerns me, is the increased divisiveness that that conflict is causing in our communities. 
We've certainly seen that with GMO on Kauai. We've seen that with TMP on the Big Island. Um, any of a number of other development type projects. Uh, uh, rail, Kagako. Rail, Kagako. Uh, Lots rail's of, a good one, know. yeah. Um, and as we were talking earlier, I mean, to the point where uh, it's dividing families, it's dividing communities, um, uh, it's dividing uh, 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 co-workers, you know, around these issues. And so I think we have to find a better way to, to resolve these issues and, and seek problem solving, design these processes so that we can more effectively problem solve. You know, when you say that, actually, Greg, it, it all sounds like the Trump issue, because families are dividing, friends are dividing, the community is dividing on that, too. And, and, and I'm wondering if there's a relationship, a sort of a, an atmospheric relationship between that issue and what we have here in Hawaii. This is maybe, is this the time in which we live where people would rather, you know, maintain self-interest and never agree with a consensus with some kind of collaborative result? Um, is it limited to Hawaii? No, it's not. It's a national issue, and it's a particularly polarized time, which is why that's in the title. Yeah. And, you know, we're worried about sp the spillover into the islands and whether that's going to infect us in the ways it's infected Charlottesville and many other places. So, uh, you know, this is a timely discussion. This is a need. I want to raise one other thing, which is uh, an issue that I've been talking about with some friends, which has to do... With, I'm going to call it strategic complacency. So we worry about very short-term issues. You heard it here. Yeah. Strategic complacency. Well, that's, write that uh, yeah. down. Be in so, the final exam. <laughs> <laughs> and a test to follow <laughs> on you. <laughs> so, so no, no. So, so we have very short-term horizons. But really, one of the the, the question also, for me, in my mind, is how do we begin to incubate the right kinds of conversations that will help shape the longer term future? It's not just about who pays for rail, it's not just whether the telescope goes up or comes down, but what's the future of the whole mountain? What's the future of a lot of research? And so we tend to be very short-sighted. And if I can just add one more thing, I think there's a logical reason for it. Mm, because we know that um, the election cycle that puts people in office really is fairly short. It's, right. you know, it looks to the next election. And I don't say that critically because that's how it is. And the business community is the same thing. They're looking at next year and the end of this year and next year. And, you know, I get that. So who's going to look long term if we don't invent the forms? Well, I mean, the problem is you say, excuse me, public part participation. Uh, what is that? I mean, we, we've seen um, groups and meetings with stakeholders who are, you know, self-interested and also transparency that is like endless, uh, that takes forever. And um, how do you find the right group? I mean, isn't that what we have government for originally? To rule, to think, to plan, to there, make important public policy decisions? So I believe that government is necessary in this, but they're insufficient. We need more. And we can't just rely on those strikes, especially in light of the rec declining confidence in our institutions, which has been going on for 40 years. Yeah. So we know that the trustworthiness and confidence level in government is declining all over. And that's global, actually. It's not just uh, here. And it's not just nationally. So the question is, if not them, who? How about us? And how do we invent the right way of doing it? Yeah, and I think inherent in that, in that approach is that when the, say, call it the body politic, you know, the, uh, make a decision or come to some kind of real consensus about it, they go to government, which uh, I believe is more porous now than it used to be, uh, because you can go to government with, uh, with a checkbook and you can get a result. Um, look at Citizens United and a you know, similar process here at Hawaii. Uh, so, so I think that maybe what you're talking about is sort of a pre-government, wraparound government kind of, kind of group decision process involving the public, uh, and the question is, you know, what kind of attitude does the public need to have in order to, you know, become the rapper that way? Uh, and how do we change the attitude of the public, um, you know, to be, ele ele not elementary, but, you know, uh, community, community based? And uh, looking broadly. A, yeah, yeah. How do we change that? Well, uh, one of the things I think is that, uh, and we've been a little misguided in thinking that we have to have full consensus. And we actually, what I think our leaders need is consent more than consensus. They need a plurality, they need a majority, so they can actually lead and do things. So we don't have ways of testing that and looking at that. You were telling us before this started about people who do really cool surveys that starts to pull out the pulse of an issue and a, a group of people. But well, why aren't we doing more of that? 
why isn't there more of that that comes to light and we can say it's not just uh, you know, a developer commissioned project, but it's something that's uh, long term. Yeah, you learn so much from surveys. I, and I was talking right. about Jeremy Firestone, right. who is a, a faculty in the University of Delaware who visited Hawaii a few years ago and talked about how he did, uh, in order to you know, examine a project, an energy project in Connecticut, he sort of invented a survey approach and the government of Connecticut hired him to find out what people really thought, not just the protesters, not just the self-interested, but everyone. And he did the survey among the people of Connecticut and had some tabulated results that were very useful to the government. And the important thing is that that kind of diminishes the possibility that one noisy, loud protest group can make it sound like they are the public. And which basically has happened here. And hijack everything. That, yeah, like TMT is a perfect example of that. Yeah, yeah you know, one, one of the issues too, Jay, is, is we have to you realize when consultation occurs within one of these established processes already, the, the end game is a yes or no vote, an up or down. Uh, so those processes are really set up to uh, count votes at that point. Um, they're not really set up for the kind of problem solving that Peter and I are, are hoping to, to get to through this. Through you this want more than yes or no questions. Yes, absolutely. You I, want to I think, I, I think it's more nuanced. Yeah. Nuanced. I, I, I think some of our issues that, that we run, some of the conflict we run into is because of how we frame the question. Yeah. Uh, TMT is a perfect, perfect example. Uh, with Envision Mauna Kea, the project that I'm working on, it's not so much whether you support the project, support TMT or not. It's really trying to get to a, a more co a core or fundamental uh, understanding of where the general public feels, how they feel about the future of the mountain. The whole mountain. The whole mountain. Not just the summit. Yes. And, and, and you can't have, that conversation isn't going to occur in a, a contested case here. So let me give you another example, just Please. to piggyback on what Greg said, because I'm a great admirer of what Greg's doing and his colleagues there. So, for example, we have a lot of toing and froing about rail, which is fine. It should be. It should be examined. We need to look, look up the rock and look at that. But isn't the bigger issue of long term about transportation? It's less about this railroad. And how do we have the right kind of long-term conversation about transportation? And we, it comes up, but it becomes you know, only a piece of the rail fights. It doesn't get focused on very well. So how do we do that? That's just an example. I don't have an answer to it, but I think we can invent one. Well, part of this, I think, um, relates to what did I see late, lately where the issue came up about where does the buck stop, you know? And uh, I think when you have a lot of meetings and a lot of, you know, uh, searches for consensus, there's no place where the buck stops. You know, I'm a member of the Energy Policy Forum. It's a consensus organization. Um, and there is really, you know, n no place where the buck stops. And they just allow a platform. So are, are you talking about allowing a platform or are you talking about making a system where at some point it's on somebody's desk or some official person or group says, here's what we're going to do. Right. I mean, we, we heard all the arguments, we heard all the proposals, we, we, we heard you guys, um, you know, come to a plan or at least a, a rough plan about how we should approach, say, transportation, uh, with all the elements. Everybody could think out of the box that way, um, but somebody has to say, that's what we're going to do. Now, in the past, uh, I think we expected government to do that, but right. we have been disappointed. In we government. have been, and that's part of the genesis of this meeting. I yeah. mean, and I, I say that uh, not as a hard critic of the government because I, it's a tough job. It's just the way it is. It is the way it is. Yeah. It's a system, and that's why I say it's necessary but insufficient. We need to add some uh, kind of additional rudders or trim tabs onto this system, and we don't have them yet. So when you get up at the beginning of, the, of this conference on December 1st, um, and where is it? It's at uh, East West Center. East West Center, uh, and it's going to be eight o'clock in the morning to start. It's going to be what? A couple of days. It runs. Uh, there's one big plenary session all day on the first, and the second day are going to be some more uh, focused uh, workshops on skills and strategies. For example, Native Hawaiians. How do they want to be consulted? Or the issue between privacy and transparency. How do we really navigate that? So yeah. we're going to take on some very specific issues in yeah. the second. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. But when you get up there and you sort of open the plenary session, there's camera one over there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what are you going to tell them? I'm going to say this. This is we're going to take up a set of topics that hasn't been looked at with the kind of clarity that we're going to try to bring. And we, if we do this right, if we succeed, we will incubate a short list 
of possible initiatives to be done after this conference. We can't do it at that conference. We don't have time. But we can say, okay, here's some specific theories, areas where we can attack those and start to make some movement. So we will incubate a short list of future initiatives. That's, you're going to tell them what you expect from them in yes, terms of concentration absolutely. involvement? Yes. I'm going to tell them the first thing is no whining. <laughs> and no whining. Let's, let's this set, is very good. It's very yeah, important. Let's set the whining aside for yeah. a little while and do some hard thinking and use our noodles for yeah, this yeah, the one yeah. day. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to say. Something okay. like that. I'll tell you what I'm going to say, though. I'm going to say it's time for a one-minute break. I knew you I had. always say that, and he always knows I'm going to say that. Uh, this is Community Matters. as Peter Adler and Greg Chun. We're talking about public participation in a polarized era. So important, not only in Hawaii, but everywhere. But we have aloha. We can try to fix this, don't you think? I do. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Hello, everyone. Ted Ralston here, a host of our Think Tech show, Where the Drone Leads, where we talk weekly at uh, Thursdays noon, by the way, on subjects related to the emerging technology and business of drones as they might apply here in Hawaii. Uh, issues involving commerce and education, legislation, uh, technology, public safety, all the things that you might want to hear about. Uh, we talk about them with uh, local experts and people from across the country. So join us at uh, noon on every Thursday and we'll have a new subject and we'll have uh, new faces to talk about this most interesting subject area. to the game and it's gonna be great early arriving for a little tailgate i usually drink but won't be drinking today because i'm the designated driver and that's okay it's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line keeps him from drinking too much so we can have a great time a little responsibility can go a long way because it's all about having fun on game day i'm the guy you want to be i'm the guy saving money i'm the guy with the h2o and i'm the guy that said let's go I told you we'd come back, and we came back, you know, like MacArthur, we came back. An honest yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay, it's Peter Adler, as Greg Chun, and they can do a program on December 1st, you should go. Um, public participation in a polarized era, the good, the bad, and the future. So let's talk about some of the specific issues, problems that you hope to discuss, either in the plenary session or in the second day. Uh, Greg, you have the uh, Mauna Kea Envision, Envision Mauna Kea, is it? Yes. What, what is that? How does it work? And how is that the kind of subject we can wrap our minds around in this program? So Envision Mauna Kea really uh, did germinate out of the TMT controversy. <clears throat> and it comes from conversations with Peter and many people in the community I've had about uh, with, who have a growing discontent with the, the nature of public discourse. And so the idea was to create a process that people could feel safe about talking about their vision, their hopes, their aspirations about for the future of Mount Kea. Not just astronomy, not just a particular project, not just a summit, but what they saw for the whole, whole mountain. And so we've created a community-based process that is outside of the contested case hearing, outside of any regulatory decision that, that's needing to be made, um, but is intended to inform and provide input from a broad base of community about their, their vision for the future. Uh, of the mountain. And it needed to be community-based. It couldn't be housed within the university. It couldn't be housed uh, within a, a particular, you know, PMT developer or astronomy, uh, although those, those entities have, have supported the process. So we have a community partner, a very strong community partner, Friends of the Future, uh, based in Waimea, who's running that whole process. And we have a strong group of community- Friends of the Future? Friends of the Future. I love that name. Yeah. Yeah, so what, what, who are they? What do they do? Friends of the Future is an organization started by Kenneth Brown many, many years ago, uh, who had a vision for uh, Hawaii Island, and particularly the Waimea Kohala uh, uh, area, as really kind of being a, a place to convene and bring people to, to solve uh, big questions in, in our communities. Uh, and uh, they have been uh, in, in, in existence for 20 plus years. They do a number of different programs. You can look at their website. But one of the programs that they've done for many years is that they work with Bishop Museum in working with the farmers in Waipio Valley to try to help bridge those conversations about leases and whatnot with Bishop Museum. 
sensitive uh, issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, they have a lot of experience in, in, in sort of bringing people together, convening people uh, around contentious issues. Mm -hmm. So we uh, approach them. They are running the program. We have a community-based uh, group of volunteers who are actually sitting through all these listening sessions, receiving the input. They'll be summarizing what they're hearing. We have a, a, a group of community-based facilitators who are running the process. So it was a lot of thinking went into the design of it because we had to uh, ensure that it, it, it existed outside of uh, any of these formal other entities. So it's a community-based process asking the bigger question of what do you hope for the future of law? So you're going to get lots of answers on that. We're all over the board. We've heard everything, yes. How do you reach a, some consensus on it? Uh, the community group who is uh, actually going through the, the sessions, uh, we are facilitating their thinking around um, and, 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 and decision making, if you will, around what are they hearing. What, we anticipated certain themes, we anticipated certain narratives, certain storylines. We're using that as a starting point, uh, but we're, as we facilitate that process, it really becomes what that group decides they have heard. And part of it is information. Yeah. You know, I mean, I remember in the dispute on Lanai or whether they should have wind uh, uh, in the Garden of the Gods on the west side of Lanai back when with Murdoch. Um, the people in the in Lanai City were convinced uh, that that the, the windmills would be right there in Lanai City. That was never the case. But if you ask them, they were they were all convinced. So it was grand misinformation. Right. And that's this, one of the this keys. This kind of discussion hopefully can clarify that. And I think when yeah, I, 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 I think Envision Mauna Kea is going to also look for those sweet spots where, where a lot of different pieces can fit together. There may be some where they can't. But you, they're talking to conservation people, artists, tour operators, uh, folks who feel very passionate about the telescope itself, both pro and con. So they're talking to a lot of groups. And the question is, can this group then say, you know, here's some sweet spots. And planners, legislators, governor, can, and county council, and mayor, here's some things for you to focus on. We've yeah. done the listening. Yeah. Well, I think they have to come into a meeting like yeah. that, into your meeting with an open mind. Mm -hmm. They can't come in and say, well, I'm going to, you know, advance my cause. I'm going to advance mine. I'm not taking any wooden nickels on it. I'm not compromising. That's the problem with polarization today. That's right. But let me ask you this. I mean, you, you've identified a number of, um, of uh, issues and areas of, of contention. Um, is there room for, you know, another one? I mean, for example, somebody co comes to uh, this program, Public Participation of Polarized Era, and he says, you know, we need the great Mihaly of, uh, of 2017. Land value, occupancy value is way too high. It's distorting the economy and the social fabric of the state. Let's talk about that. Is he going to be able to do that? Uh, we're not going to have a whole meeting and spend the whole day talking about that one topic. Everybody's got a pet topic. So I, I have mine, and I'm not going to get to talk about all mine, too. We're going to focus on some high-level uh, notions. and take, First, we're going to try and do some information and say, here's what the, the requirements are. Right. And we're going to get some business perspectives. We'll have Ed Case talking about a governmental perspective on that. Marge Ziegler from the conservation can talk about community and NGOs. And then we'll have these case studies, and we'll really try to lift up the rock and understand those. And if I wouldn't want someone coming to this meeting and saying, I'm going to spend the whole day talking about rail. It'll take you off the track is what will happen. It will, That's well, the risk of this kind it of is open a risk, discussion. But, yeah? You know, we're going to try our best to manage this thing and not Got let it get it. hijacked. We're yeah. pretty good at that, actually. Yeah, good. I know Re are. Reasonably good. <laughs> not, every once in a while we slip, but most of the but, time we do. But that is appropriate to the whole problem solving you're talking about, too not to get distracted. That's I right. think we live in a world of distraction. Our esteemed president distracts us all the time. Uh, the press itself gets distracted. Right. There are politicians out there that make Huey Long look like a piker. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we have to avoid distraction, so That's we have right. to stay on the path. And it's very easy for a conference like this to get ADD and completely distracted and fragmented and pulled apart pulled a to the next shiny object. And yeah. that's what we want to yeah. stay focused. And I'll be there to remind them, as will Greg well, and others. In their hearts, that's what people really want. They I want so. structure. Absolutely. I yeah. think so. And some trustworthiness in the platforms. Greg, one of the things Greg has done is build a trustworthy platform for those discussions. And uh, that's one of the keys to this. I can't, you, I can't you tell you, it? Jay, how many times in these listening sessions that we've been holding, no matter where uh, a person stands on, on TMT or astronomy or some aspect of, of, of an issue related to the mountain, at the end of the day, they, they say, you know, 
we should have had these conversations much earlier in the process. Somebody should have been doing this with us much earlier because they have a chance to hear other people's perspectives in a safe setting and express theirs in a safe setting. Yeah. And that in itself has, has tremendous value We've for our lost some of that. So who do you want to come down? Because everybody that comes down as a player, as a participant, yes. will have, we'll have a, a say in the, in the proceedings. So, if it worked, so who, who do you yeah, want to be there? That's a great question. Yeah. So if it worked out well, which I can't fully control, we would have people from government agencies, people from community and NGOs, and business people there. And we're all talking about the same thing and listening to the same stuff in, in one place. And we're all thinking hard about inventing solutions. So we know, you know the problem will look different to different people, but the question is, can we get it more inventive and creative in this next era? Can we do this better? Can we do public engagement and public participation better? I'm an optimist that we can. Mm -hmm. I'm optimistic that we can. Now and at the end of the program, say after the second day, or shortly yep. after, hopefully, um, you're going to want to document maybe and create yes. a book of proceedings about what was discussed and what the takeaway was. What does the takeaway look like, I mean, as far as you can see it, into the future, and what does that book so, of proceedings look like? We've asked, it won't be a book, first of all, because we don't Books have, are too long. Books are very long. Yeah, I know, I mean, you, the book you wrote about India, that was pretty long. <laughs> that, that was pretty long, <laughs> and God bless you for reading any of it. So, <laughs> no, so what we're going to do is we have two people who are, I will call, our designated listeners, and one of those is Jana Wolf, and the other one is Ann Smoke. And they are both going to be spending the whole day listening for the ideas. What's the ideas that we can turn to actions? What are actionable ideas? And at the end of the day, the first day, they're going to report. And they say, here's the list. Here's a list of things that we can do. That you can do, we can do. If somebody has the energy and time to organize it, these are things that we can go forward with. Yeah, you know, we do that sometimes in our talk shows, really. You do a lot of it's it. Sort of at the end of the yeah. talk show, we say to somebody at the table, we do this in our energy shows all the time, we say, okay, we've had a good discussion, a lot of points, hither and yon. Uh, you know, can you summarize for us, Greg? <laughs> what the takeaway is? Yeah. Um, in the ideal situation, uh, <laughs> you, will have, you will have these two or three strategies that, have, uh, that people see are actionable. Uh, and in the process, my own personal hope is through the conversation, uh, there's some, I'm not going to call it consensus building, but maybe at least some healing that can start to occur. Because I think that is what, uh, that, that's what concerns me so much about the state of Yeah, we need that, don't we? We need Absolutely. the healing. Oh, oh, pono, pono. We, it's, and, you know, it's certainly well within the culture to do that, have to do it in a certain way so that people come out the other side and they like where they are, they like the people around them, and they like the idea of going forward on it. Um, so, you know, I wanted to ask you if you, would, um, if you would speak to camera one, Peter, and tell them what you want them to know. And in the process, you know, you could, you could give them your website also. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if you can, uh, this, is, this is what we are doing on December 1 and 2, half day on the 2nd. And I would just, uh, I want to do this commercial and encourage you, if you are interested in this, to come to the conference, to participate in it. Yes, there is a registration fee. Yes, there's going to be some good food that we hope to provide to people for the registration fee. Plus, it's a nice venue. And uh, I hope people will come with a very open mind. And our goal is to get inventive and creative, more so than we have been, about figuring out ways to talk about the toughest issues that we have in the state and do some of that healing and at least have some civility in those discussions. It's very provocative what you're doing. It wraps around you know, the whole notion of, what is, what is wrong in our community? Why is it wrong? Uh, what processes haven't worked for us? Yeah. Um, how can we get people together to make good process and, and have good results? This is really important, and now is the time for it. You're absolutely And you're going to be there. I'll be there. You're going to be there. You yeah. and your colleagues are going to be there. We'll do some filming. We'll try yeah. and capture a record of it. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to this. This is really special. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Greg. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you. We're going to talk Thank about you. this again as we get closer. Absolutely. Good. Yeah.